Can, can you hear me? Great. So um, we live in a world today where uh, we match like with like. You know, if you like this, maybe you'll also like that. Or you should meet Johnny. He's a lot like you. Uh, I applied to the TED Fellows program because I, I really wanted to meet and collaborate with people who are totally different than me outside my fishbowl. And um, <coughs> see if this goes. Yes. Okay. I'm an ecologist, and I've been studying the network structure of nature for almost 25 years. And I just want to share with you my little ecological perspective on this diverse network of collaborations I stumbled into. So these are some of the people that I collaborated with uh, through the program. They're colored by discipline, and uh, you can see most of them are not like me. I met David, an artist, David German, who does amazing installations driven by data feeds. And we began a series of collaborations around data art and data storytelling. We had one project in collaboration with Intel Labs that was called We the Data. It was about the personal data economy and democratizing data. And in this one, we, we aggregated a lot of expert knowledge to map the network structure of the personal data economy to try to find leverage points for positive change. And in that project, we needed experts on, let's say, privacy and personal, personal security. So who else to turn to but uh, Esra El-Shefi, a human rights activist from Bahrain, named one of the bravest bloggers in the world. Um, she is so badass that she can't even have a picture of herself online. We also needed expertise on issues of digital access to the underserved. And who better to talk to than uh, Walid al sakaf a Yemeni anti-censorship anti activist who um, helped keep the internet alive during the protests of the Arab Spring. And then I found out that from Esra that she and Walid actually collaborated all the time. It turns out that Walid comes to the rescue every time the, the Bahraini government takes her site down. So I realized that my story wasn't unique, the story of collaboration. And so just out of curiosity, I put a little uh, email out, a little survey out to the TED Fellows just a week ago to say, hey, can you just send me a list of who you collaborated with? And this is what we got. So I, I knew there were a few, but I had no idea there were this many, really. Uh, and the, the program's only five years old. So look at this. These collaborations are uh, remarkably international. And you might think that these are just like a group of people who you know, got together at TED for a whole week, and then they start collaborating. But actually, even fellows from different classes who never met each other in person are beginning to collaborate. We could sort them by discipline and uh, from left to right, different colors, and then vertically by the diversity of those disciplinary collaborations. So up in the upper left is uh, Camilo Rodriguez Beltran, a TED Senior Fellow. Uh, he is a self-avowed cross-disciplinary collaboration slut. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and he's not the only one, because it turns out that there's actually 84% of the people in this graph had at least one cross-disciplinary collaboration. Here's one. Uh, Jessica Green is a microbial ecologist. She studies the biology of buildings uh, and the human microbiome. She collaborated with a journalist, Adam Huggins, and with filmmaker and former science fiction writer, Anita Doran, to create a sci-fi graphic novel about the human microbiome set in Paris. That's a new Netflix genre. <laughs> And, uh, and then this next one submission, my, my jaw literally dropped when I read this one. Um, check it out. Suleiman Bakit, a, a Jordanian social entrepreneur, collaborated with Adrian Hong in 2011 during the Libyan revolution. Together, they helped open the door to evacuating tens of thousands of injured civilians to get them urgent medical care in Jordan. And in fact, the collaboration had to be kept secret because of, for fear of retaliation from the Libyan regime. Um, and today is the first time it's ever been mentioned in public. So pretty amazing. Um, but there's more. <laughs> we can let all these people now sort themselves into groups of people that are collaborating more with one another and start to see the emergence of collaborative communities that are forming here that are algorithmically sorted and colored um, by the structure of the network. So McLeod Hedero is at the center of a cluster of performers that collaborated together. McLeod is an, is an Ethiopian-American singer-songwriter, and here is just a, a, a video image of one of her collaborations with shadow master and performer Christine Marie to make a cinematic shadow music video of McLeod's work, and it's absolutely stunning. 
On the other side of the graph, we got a hub. Um, Eric, Eric Hersman is a hub in a, an emerging collaborative cluster around the African tech and makerspace. And there are just so many other stories to tell, and we don't have time to tell them of us all today. But the good news is that we're making this entire web uh, online published today, fully interactive for you to explore. And in fact, um, what you just saw, everything, emerged from a collaboration uh, among TED Fellows. This is a, this cloud-based interactive tool to map and share visual stories about how things are connected emerged from a collaboration of a few TED Fellows. Uh, David German, the artist that I mentioned earlier, he did all the design work that you see now. He's sitting right there. Kaustav de Biswas, the computer scientist and architect who is actually making it work, and he's arriving this afternoon, and me, the, the complexity guy. We also are collaborating sorry, with a few other TED Fellows as advisors like Sean Gourley and Jessica Green and a research group at Intel Labs. So um, we call it the Mapper, and we've actually never before um, displayed it in public. Um, and I know it may sound cheesy, but this particular network story literally did change my life. Um, I call it unexpected mismatches made in heaven. Thank you. <laughs>